pray the Lord. We thank God for every opportunity every day. And now we continue serving him. In as long as we are still alive, in as long as he is still our father keeping us and leading us one day at a time, one moment at a time. And so his son who is risen, exalted high and above, is our advocate. And so we think about Jesus' ascension into heaven, how he went and why he went. His ascension is our hope. Our hope because our Lord Jesus Christ had mentioned a lot about his ministry on earth and thereafter that he would be lifted up and go to heaven. And these are the things that we are going to share about this time round. And so we appreciate God for every moment of opportunity that he gives us to share from his word. And so we have been in the moments of the resurrection, Easter, and after 40 days, the Bible says that he was lifted up. And we have two accounts which are very clear. One account is in the gospel according to Luke. And this gospel according to Luke is chapter 24, where Luke gives the account of Jesus' ascension, him being taken up to heaven. And we begin with it and chapter 24, we read verse 50, 51, and um, 52. The Bible says that, and he led them out as far as Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. Now it came to pass, while Jesus blessed them, that he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. He was blessing them, and there must have been a force that lifted him and parted him from them, and he was taken up to heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. So this portion of scripture that is given by St. Luke specifies to us, gives us testimony that Jesus, after the 40 days on earth, he was lifted. He parted from them, but he lifted his hands and blessed them before he went. Now, another account is in the book of Acts of the Apostles by the same author. And the same author is St. Luke. Because actually the Bible um, is containing two accounts written by the same person. And these two accounts are one I've already given Luke 24 and another one is in Acts of the Apostles chapter 1. And you can read the entire chapter and think through it. But for this ascension, the day that Jesus was lifted up, we shall concentrate on chapter 1, verses 9, and go on up to 11. And the Bible says, Now when he had spoken these things while they watched, he was taken up, and the cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly, Toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in a white apparel, who said to them, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, whom you who was taken up from you into heaven, will also come in the like manner as you saw him go into heaven. Friends, this is the word of the Lord, which gives us testimony and which affirms to us that Jesus' ministry after the earthly one, he accomplished what he came to do. And time comes, he had finished and he was exalted. The very first lesson that we pick from here is when we start work, when we are put here, we need to accomplish that for which we are put here. We must do our work and finish. Jesus accomplished it. And after he had accomplished, he was lifted up. It was glory. And so this is something very important, that while you are still here, do what you are put here to do. You finish, 
you go to another assignment. Now, Jesus finishes the earthly ministry and he goes to another assignment that is slated for him in heaven. And the Bible says that he was lifted up and he went back into, into heaven. This is very important, very, very important for me and you. And so this ascension signifies success. Success in earthly ministry. He was seen going in bodily form and visibly. And so we pray to God to give us success while we are here. And you who is there and me who is here and everywhere else, as long as you still have life, pray that God gives you success. And Jesus was lifted up and we see him go in scripture. And so he is our great high priest who had gone, who went up to heaven. And the Bible says that he goes to prepare places for us. Other scriptures do mention the book of Hebrews gives a lot of attention to Jesus' work on earth as a sacrifice. And Jesus attention gives to work of Jesus Christ as a high priest and who accomplished his work and he ascended into heaven. And so the reason why in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 14 the Bible says that we need to hold fast on the faith that we confess. Because he's alive and because he's ascended. So holding fast onto the faith because what he promised was fulfilled. And this is, this is what makes Christianity unique among all other faiths, all other religions in the world. And in Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3, the Bible says that after making purification for our sins, and this is what brought him, of course, he sat down at the right hand of the Father. And after he accomplishes, he sits down at the right hand of the Father. And so for me, it remains a challenge, it remains an encouragement, really, that when I'm given an assignment, I need to accomplish it. Before you sit down and say, yes, all is done, now Jesus gives us an example, that when he goes up to heaven, he sits at the right hand of the Father because he had accomplished what had brought him. Now, we can now draw near to God at his throne of mercy, at his throne of grace, because he has gone there. He was one of us here. And so we can now affirm very clearly that the confidence is there, that our own is there. Our Lord Jesus Christ is there. And so, friends, that is actually something very important that I wanted to put across about this ascension. One other thing that I wanted to put across that I have read, that I have thought through, and which you already know, but we keep encouraging ourselves day in, day out, so that our fire does not go out. So we keep encouraging ourselves in these matters. So ascension, as Jesus goes to heaven, it assures us of an advocate with the Father, and it's actually connected with what I've already said. As he sits at the right hand of the Father, he pleads with the Father for us, with the Father for us. Sinners, he says they are there, and as he's there, he's at the throne of mercy, still pleading with God, forgive them. And you remember the statements that he made on the cross. One of them is forgive them because they do not know what they do. And so God gives us another opportunity, another chance to live on because we have an advocate with him, who is our Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what he promised that he would do. And so what is incumbent upon us is we need to take the time to utilize it profitably. As Peter puts it, some people think that it's a delay of sorts, that actually Jesus is coming, he has delayed. And Peter says, no, it's not a delay. As we read in 2 Peter, that it's not a delay, but he is just patient with us to put right. And so the Lord Jesus Christ, because he still pleads with, with God on our behalf, and so we still have the time to put right things that are wrong. So he's our advocate, he's our mediator. We read it in Hebrews 9, 15. He mediates, he advocates for us. And so, but on earth also here where we are, while he went, he advocates with the Father on our behalf, but also sent an advocate on his behalf here, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, because like he does mention in John 14, 16, 17, that ask the Father and he will give you another advocate. Yes, Jesus is doing his work up there, but the Holy Spirit is also doing work down here, advocating for us. Actually, his presence is limitless. He, 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 is, he is power. He is our strength. He is our encouragement. And so we have 
as Jesus is doing the work of pleading with the Father, the Holy Spirit is here doing the work of convicting people of sin. The reason why you repent, the reason why you confess, the reason why I repent, the reason why I confess, the Holy Spirit is at work. So the ascension of Jesus Christ gives us all these uh, benefits, empowering us with his presence, and so that we can have something to present at the end of time. When he comes back, because one thing that actually we are going to find out in a little moment is about that. Now, ascension establishes our Lord Jesus Christ as the reigning king. You see, I mean, people have made comparisons. Some people call him a prophet. Some people call him, you know, any other like any other. But listen to me. The Lord Jesus Christ is the reigning Lord and king. He is ascended. Bodily form, but he is lifted up. And he has gone to heaven with his, you know, um, physical and, you know, exalted and high above. So he is the reigning king because he rules with the power. He rules with authority. He rules with the dominion. And so the reason why we say, the Bible is saying that he is seated at the right hand of the father. And he will come again to judge the living and the dead. And so in Philippians chapter 2 verse 9, which is a very, very common verse, that... Jesus paraphrased it this way, that he received a name, a name above all names, the Lord Jesus Christ. He received a name and a name above all names. And so this is critical for us that he is above. The reason why Christianity is a faith that has stood thousands of years and it's still going because Jesus reigns as king, reigns as king. And um, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 20, 21, we have already said that seated at the right hand of the Father in the heavenly spaces. You know, there are two spaces. I've just remembered this. Two spaces. One space belongs to God, and that is the heavenly space, up, up, exalted and high. Now, heavenly space is for God. Now, the earthly space, land here, is the space for human beings. And so God is exalted high and above and is reigning. And the Bible says that actually this earth is his footstool on which he puts his feet. And now as we sit, you and I, we are sitting at the feet of our Lord, of our God. Like a child sits at the feet of the Father with a lot of security around. So even us really, we sit at the feet of our Lord, our God, and the earth he has given it to the sons of men to do work here. And so friends, Jesus is high and exalted. His ascension proves this to us. And so as believers, we are called upon to stand past, to stand in power, to be strong in the Lord and have vast strength. And Paul puts it to us in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10, stand fast in the Lord. Finally, he said finally. And so we need to put on all those, you know, um, Paul puts them closer together, the shield, you know, the helmet, and so that could continue fighting because he will soon come and come as king. And so um, one other thing, and one, two, or three, and then I finish, that ascension connect us, connects us to the gifts that while he is up, he endows us with the gifts. He, he powers down. He's up, he powers down gifts. And when we read Ephesians chapter 4, verse 7 to 12, there are lots of things that actually the Paul mentions there that has ascended, has seated, so he powers down gifts and the gifts of ascension. He gives us gifted ministers, gifts that actually gifts us as people of God in the vineyard. And the reason why he does mention something here, that actually he has apportioned some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, some to be pastors, and some to be teachers. The fivefold ministry is as a result of the ascended Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And this team plays the role. And we are gifted to do this. And so we receive these benefits from the ascended Lord. And we get gifted leaders ministers who are needed in edifying the body of Christ. So as we wait for him to come back, he has gifted us with this gift, with these ministers gifted to edify the body of Christ. 
the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers. And we shall find time and we shall actually explain a little bit more about the roles of each of these. And I promise that we shall find time and do that. So that this is for the edification. This is for the strengthening of the people of God. And this is important for you and me to know that actually we are gifted because Jesus is the one who powers these gifts from up and we receive them. And we have these ministers in our midst. And so what do they do? Uh, that will be another topic of another day. And finally, his ascension enables us to long, to long, wait, 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 wait for his coming back. Pray the Lord. He's coming back. And remember in Acts of the Apostles chapter 1, when we're reading from verse 9, the men of Israel, okay, the prophets, the, I mean the, the apostles were looking up and staring up, 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 gazing up. Then the two men, the angels, came and said, this same Jesus that you see going up will come back. And so, friends, we wait for his coming. This same Jesus will come. It creates that longing. So what, what do we need to do as we wait for his coming? And that's another thing that actually we needed to dive deeper into. What do we do? What do we need to do as we wait for his coming? So meaning as he goes, he will come back. And now he's an advocate. He's pleading for us. Now when he comes back, he'll come as a judge. And when he sits on the judgment seat, you know, everybody will be paraded and will give account of what you have done, of what you have said, everything that you have been through here on earth, what you here. And so, friends, we call upon ourselves. As we wait for his coming, we need to do the work and do it well. Treat others well, preach the gospel, love other one another, you know, help one another, and enable one another to edify. And so that when he comes back, he will find us all ready to receive him. Like he went, he will come back. So friends, Jesus' ascension is our hope that he will come. And when he comes, he finds you at your work, but ready to receive him in the clouds. And, we, and, the, and the Bible says that we, shall be, that we shall be transformed in a moment and all of us shall be lifted up and, you know, transformed in a moment. How? To receive spiritual bodies so that we are able to fly and go with him because this physical body cannot. And that's why the transformation is needed. So we need to transform ourselves bodily. I mean, our actions transformed so that actually we shall line up, we shall be aligned uh, with his holiness, his righteousness. May God bless you and watch over you. As you contemplate upon this, uh, the ascension of the Lord Jesus Christ, which gives us a hope for his second coming. May God bless you and watch over you. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.